Hi, welcome everyone. I'm with Emily Fletcher of Ziva Online. Emily is one of my favorite meditation teachers. And as we talk about all the time, meditation is one of the most essential things for health, fitness, success in weight loss, and in life because it reduces stress, reduces cortisol levels, which cortisol is the hormone that causes you to gain weight, or one of the hormones that causes you to gain weight. And uh, Emily is just such a natural and enjoyable meditation teacher. She's been to my Omega retreat twice, and she has rocked the house in front of 150 to 200 people. Uh, she does a meditation where you can hear a pin drop. Everybody is spellbound. And uh, she's got a free masterclass uh, that's coming out that she wants to share with us. And she's also going to lead us through a really, really cool meditation. So let me bring Emily in. Emily, great to see you again. How's it going? What a joy. Thanks for having me. So awesome. Always great to talk with you. And uh, so um, before we start, tell me, you got you have a master class coming up that uh, is free to join that uh, can help us learn how to meditate. Is that right? Yeah. So it's called The Stress Solution. And it's all about how using mindfulness, meditation, and manifesting can help get rid of stress in your body so you can really perform at the top of your game. And that includes, you know, stress eating, body image, how you interact with your self acceptance, because stress is really not doing us any favors in those departments. De definitely not. Now, um, I, I know you're going to kind of do a kind of customized meditation for us to help us uh, change our relationship with food and uh, feel more feel more comfortable. And I remember you saying once before that you had uh, that, uh, some relationships with food that were unhealthy and that meditation greatly uh, helped you with that. I'm wondering if you wouldn't mind sharing some of that. Yeah, so it's not something that I talk about too often because it feels intensely personal, but I thought that, you know, what a beautiful audience. And if anyone's going to be accepting of it, it will be you and your amazing tribe. I, and I, first of all, I want to say, like, thank you so much for bringing me to Omega. I've so enjoyed working with people from the Gabriel Method. And the, the combination of Ziva and the Gabriel Method seems to really be transforming lives. So I'm yeah. just very grateful for the work that you're doing. Thank you. And same to you. Um, okay, so... You know, I, I weight has never been my issue. I um, in Ayurvedic medicine, you would call me a vata type. So I have a very fast metabolism, and my I burn really fast. Like I, when I get out of balance, I tend towards insomnia or anxiety. But the trick was that I, when I was very young, like around 10 or 11, I started modeling. Like I moved to New York to be a model and I was a dancer. And so my whole life, like from pre-adolescence into my teens, I was being judged by the way that I looked. I was in front of mirrors. I was wearing leotards and I was literally being paid and hired directly based on how I looked and my weight. And so I just had this constant relationship with my body that was pretty... I won't call it abusive, but it was just hypercritical that every single thing I ate, I was doing the math of what's this going to do to my body. I was never eating for joy. I was never eating for nourishment. It was always a math equation happening. Like, like so many of us, you know, I lived through that math equation, you know, because I, I went to fat camp at the age of 10, uh, 10 to 13. And all we talked about was calories in, calories out. And there was just always just this math equation. So I know exactly what you're talking about with that math equation. And people live their whole lives with that equation. Yeah, and it just it robs you of any joy or any nourishment or, or really the sustaining life force that can be food. And it, and so, but no really one really does. You know, it, I just got to say, you know, because you touched the core with me, it just it deprives you of, of just your, your happiness in, in any type of eating because you're always looking around and there's always someone else that, you know, is eating milkshakes and hot dogs. It's not that calories in, calories that's not working, not affecting them, but you have to do the math and you have to add it up and you have to restrict yourself. And it is a nightmare. I, I, many of people that are listening right now know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. And, and it, I wasn't necessarily like overweight. And yeah. so people didn't know it was sort of like a hidden and I'm not, it's not a complaint, but it was just this constant, it was taking up so much energy yeah. and, um, and it was, it was just felt embarrassing and I would judge myself. So I thought other people were judging me and then I would judge other people. And, um, and so I, I didn't have an eating disorder, but my joke is that I, I didn't not have an eating disorder. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, Emily, even though you didn't have a weight issue, you were still trying to push yourself to be thinner than your body wanted to be, which is similar to people that do have a weight issue. I mean, basically, we're, when, when you're doing the calories in, calories out model, you're trying to force yourself to be a weight less than your body, quote, wants to be. And so you kind of were, from an emotional perspective, you were experiencing the same thing for sure. 
Yeah. And it was at such a formative age. And so I, I, that was around like 10, 11 that I started modeling and then I was dancing and performing up until I was 30. Um, and so I learned to meditate when I was about 26, 27 and your folks probably know my journey. I was on Broadway for 10 years. I found meditation. It really changed my life left Broadway, went to India and started a three-year training process to teach this. And it wasn't until about really like two to three years in of a daily meditation practice that I, I just realized one day I was having a meal and it just sort of dawned on me. I was like, I haven't cared really about what I was eating. I haven't judged what I've been eating for years. Like this thing just fell away, but I didn't notice that it had fallen away until I just sort of woke up and I was like, whoa, all that energy, all that self-criticism, all that hatred that I was giving to myself just went away. And I don't even remember when it happened. And now I feel like I have a really healthy relationship with food. I'm, I'm able to listen and intuit to what my body needs. I have a greater understanding of what serves my particular nervous system. I eat for nourishment um, and I'm not eating out of a place to fill myself up. And yeah. I, I just, I, I got to say, I, I've had that same experience because it's, it's now been years down the road for me in my meditation journey that there have been different things along the way that fell away without any ceremony. You know, there wasn't any like grand thing, oh, I'm healed or whatever. But I'm like, I'm not like that anymore. Yeah. I'm not judging myself. I'm not hating myself. I'm not criticizing myself. I'm not worried about this or that. They, these things tend to just go away as you activate the more creative, loving, and accepting part of your brains, part of your brain, which is what happens when you meditate. Yeah. And I think that's a beautiful thing to highlight for people who are starting on their meditation yeah. journey or a little earlier, because a lot of us are waiting for the light switch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we're waiting for the aha, like, oh, I'm enlightened, or like the yeah. ceremony, like you said, of like, yeah. oh, now I'm perfect. But yeah, that doesn't really happen. Yeah, it goes. It's like I had a guy who worked for me once and he'd been meditating for about two years, and we we're in the middle of a staff meeting, and all of a sudden he looks down and he goes, whoa. And I said, what? And he goes, I haven't bitten my nails. Yeah. Yeah. And he goes, I haven't had nails in years since I was 10. And he said, and I don't remember not biting them. I just have nails now. Yeah. And so that's a cool, um, sort of a similar realization. Very cool. So, uh, so um, you've very generously offered to do a meditation for us that can help us kind of create, become more in line with healthy eating and uh, having a healthy relationship with food in our bodies. And uh, so I'm wondering if, if we can do that if you're ready. Yeah, let's just dive on in. Awesome. Um, so a couple of things that'll be helpful for us to know as we go into this is that I'm going to walk you through, we'll start with a breathing technique and it's one of my favorites. We'll look a little silly, but we'll all be looking silly together. Okay. Um, but it's something called balancing breath and we're closing the right and left nostrils, which helps to balance the right and left hemispheres of the brain. Okay. So it's really balancing that critical mind with the creative mind, uh, that past and future rumination piece that's always housing our stress and self-criticism with that present moment. Moment, awareness, bliss, and fulfillment. It also helps to de-excite the nervous system. And what we're really interested in at Ziva is giving the body deep healing rest so that we can not only deal with our stress in the present moment, but also get rid of our stress from the past. Right. Because right? the less stress you have in your body, the better able you are to perform at the top of your game, the better able you are to make um, intuitive decisions about what you want to eat and how you want to feel. Um, and Mm -hmm. I, I just like to add one thing about the stress also that's really important for those of us that are healing and trying to uh, trying to lose weight and trying to also heal our bodies is that when you're most of us are in a chronic stress state, whether we realize it or not, and, and our brains, the stressful, fearful part of our brain, the amygdala, is, is pumping out stress hormones all the time. And when you're in a stress state, you can't be in a reparative mode. So, you know, our adrenals produce stress hormones, and they also re produce reparative hormones. Mm -hmm. And the, the reparative hormones help us, they help us lose weight, uh, they help us heal from cancer, or heart disease, or any kind of mutations in our cells, uh, or any skin issues, they're there to heal. But your, your adrenals are only going to be in one state or the other. So if you're in a chronic stress state, you are never repealing and repairing your body. And that's the case that most of us are in. And meditation can help turn all that off and put us in a healing place where we're actually able to heal, which means losing weight, which means healing from chronic autoimmune issues and digestion issues and, and heart disease and all these different things. So 
it is it is such a powerful. There was a I I, I know I'm rambling. This is your thing, but but I'm, I'm as passionate as you are at this point about meditation. But uh, I don't recall exactly what the, what there was a um, a Harvard doctor that, and I don't know who it is, and I have to look it up. But it said that meditation could be the single greatest healing technique on earth. This is this is what he said. So um, because you're able to heal your body, but yes. go ahead, I'll I'll, leave, I'll I'll take it give it back yeah. to you now. I love it so much. Thank you for setting that up and really setting the stage. But I a thousand percent agree because scientists are calling stress the black plague of our century. And stress is responsible for somewhere between 80 to 90 percent of all doctors visits. And so this thing is wreaking havoc on our body. And like you said, it's putting us in this perpetual state of fight or flight. And when your body is in fight or flight, it's not interested in healing. It's not interested in repairing. It's not interested in enjoyment. Basically, the meat suit is doing anything it can to stay alive and that includes feeding on fighting or fornicating anything it can find so you get quite reactionary and you're not making rational decisions you're not acting in accordance with what you know you're acting in accordance with the baseline level of stress in the nervous system because we all know how we should be acting you know we could all write a self-help book if we were given 10 grand and a ticket to hawaii like it's eat more vegetables you know call your mom more often go to bed before midnight it's like It's not that hard, but most of us aren't doing it because we have so much stress in our body. So that's why we're really passionate about giving people tools at Ziva to not only handle their stress in the right now, but to get rid of all that old stress that's been stored in our body. Okay, so let's just dive on in. I know you want to nerd out about this for hours. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can go on and on. I have like 10 other things. And you made me feel guilty, by the way, about the Bob thing. So. I'm going to make about, sure the I, about the mom thing. So I'm going to make sure I call my mom after this, after this conversation. <laughs> yes, everybody call your Thanks mom. If your yeah. mom isn't with us anymore, then send her some love. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> okay, so to start, let's take our right hand, and we're going to use our thumb and our ring finger. If that's hard for you, you could use your pinky finger. Oh, easy. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, there you go. Let's go ahead, show me here. What are we doing? Wait, so close okay, your okay. right nostril with your thumb. Yeah. And exhale through your left nostril. Okay. Really good. Now inhale through the left. And then we switch sides, closing the left nostril with the ring finger and exhaling through the right. Doing so good. (laughs) Inhale through the right. And then switching sides, closing the right nostril with the thumb and exhaling through the left. Really good. Inhaling through the left. Letting this be the biggest, most delicious inhale you've taken all day. And when you get to the top, just float there for just one moment and then switching sides and exhaling through the right. Now, if you're stopped up on one nostril or the other, you can just do this on one side. Go ahead and inhale through the right. And if you have a deviated septum or if this is uncomfortable for you, you could simply just breathe really slowly. And we're switching sides, exhaling through the left. Good. And you can go ahead and close your eyes if you haven't already. And we'll take a big inhale through the left nostril. When you get to the top of your inhale, take one more sip of air, filling your lungs to their full capacity, and then floating there, noticing that space between for just a moment, and then switching sides and letting that air just fall out of the lungs through the right nostril, all the way until you get to empty. And when you get to the bottom of the exhale, again, floating there for just a moment, dancing in that space between, and then letting that air fall back into your lungs through the right nostril, all the way to full. So the pattern here is simply out in, switch out in. You can start to do this in your own time. And on your next inhale, I invite you to imagine that as the breath enters, imagine this breath and energy is coming in through the base of your spine. And as you fill your lungs, imagine that breath and energy traveling up your spine and then switching sides and sending that breath and energy right out through the middle of your forehead. So again, as you inhale, imagining the breath and energy coming in through the base of the spine, as you fill your lungs, feeling that energy traveling up your spine, and as you switch sides, exhaling and sending that breath and energy right out through the middle of your forehead. So we'll do a few more cycles here. And as we close the right and left nostrils, what we're doing is that we're balancing the right and left hemispheres of the brain. We're balancing that critical mind with the creative mind, the masculine side with the feminine side, our past and future with our present moment. We're also starting to de-excite the nervous system. We're preparing our body for deep healing rest, which might be quite different than what most people think of when they think of meditation. Think of this as just a time to surrender, 
a time to give your body deep restorative rest. We'll do one more cycle. Letting it be the biggest breath you've taken all year. And the next time you come to an exhale, you can keep your eyes closed, but drop your hands into your lap. And I'll walk you through a simple but powerful mindfulness technique called come to your senses. And this is actually one of the things that we teach inside of Ziva Online. But it's a really powerful tool you could do with your eyes closed. You could also do it before a meal. We're just going to be using our five senses as a tool to bring ourselves into the body and into the right now. So with the eyes closed, we'll begin by hearing all the sounds that we can detect. The prevalent sound of my voice, perhaps there's an air conditioner or a heater on in your room. And we're not judging these sounds as good or bad. We're just accepting all of them as part of this experience, including all of them inside of our awareness, the prevalent and the subtle. Really good. And on your next breath, gently coming and bringing your awareness into your sense of touch. So noticing what's the most prevalent tactile sensation happening in your body right now. For most of us, it'll be our bums in the chair. Or perhaps you can feel the coolness or the heat of the air against your skin. Even if you have a pain in your body, the key here is to not judge the sensations as good or bad, but simply noticing them. And we'll talk more about how this technique can really change your relationship with food. When we learn to not chase pleasure or avoid pain, we open ourselves up to an infinite source of power and wisdom. So just noticing all the tactile sensations happening in your body. Really good. And now even with the eyes closed, see what you're seeing. Perhaps it's the prevalence of blackness, or maybe you could see some light streaming through your eyelids, or even colors happening in your mind's eye. Now taste what you're tasting. So even though you're not currently eating anything, there's always some sort of a taste happening in the mouth. Can you taste your morning breakfast or your afternoon coffee? Is your mouth acidic or dry or is it simply the absence of taste? There's no right or wrong way to do this. We're just starting to wake up our five senses as a tool to bring ourselves into the body and into the present moment, which is always where our bliss and fulfillment live, right here, right now. And now smell what you're smelling. Noticing how your room smells different from the outside. Can you smell your own shampoo or perfume? Really good. And now we'll take a moment to start to hold all of our senses in our awareness at the same time, like we're stacking them on top of each other pulling the lens of our awareness back and practicing a simultaneity of consciousness. So hear what you're hearing. Feel what you're feeling. See what you're seeing. Taste what you're tasting. And smell what you're smelling. Really giving yourself permission to be so deliciously human so comfortable, so at home inside your body. Using our five senses as a tool to bring ourselves into this moment. And again, hear what you're hearing, feel what you're feeling, see what you're seeing, taste what you're tasting and smell what you're smelling. And from this space of expanded awareness and acceptance, I invite you to simply sit in your body for just a few moments, just sort of in your own time, cycling through these five senses, allowing your breath to be easy, 
allowing your mind to be gentle. We're not trying to stop our thoughts. Thoughts are not the enemy of meditation. If you find your mind racing or if you feel like you're falling asleep, you can gently come back to one of your senses and we'll just be here for a moment. Hearing what you're hearing, feeling what you're feeling, seeing what you're seeing, tasting what you're tasting and smelling what you're smelling. Allowing every single cell in your body to rest and digest, to repair, to optimize. Knowing that as you take this time for rest and recharge, you'll come out on the other side even brighter, even more present, even more awake, even more intuitive even more accepting of your body. Really good. And from this space of groundedness and presence, We'll move into the third M of the Ziva technique, which is manifesting. So I invite you to think of one situation, one life event where you might find yourself in the future, where you're faced with that old pal of self-doubt or self-criticism or judgment Perhaps you see yourself at a party where your old habit would have been to binge and criticize yourself or to deny yourself. Or perhaps you see yourself standing in front of the mirror and your old habit may have been to criticize yourself. But just imagine one scenario that has been challenging for you in the past, but I want you to imagine as if you're stepping into it in the future. So you're standing at the buffet, you're looking in the mirror, you're looking at a photo of someone whose body perhaps you used to feel jealous of. And I want you to now imagine your dream case scenario. If you had a magic wand and you could act and feel in any way, how would that story play out? What actions would you take? So really see yourself in this situation. If you're at a party, I want you to see who's in the room. If you're looking at the buffet table, I want you to actually see that food. And what does this sound like? Are people laughing? Is there music? If you're standing in front of the mirror, is it silent? But really, like you're a little kid playing pretend, waking up your imagination and fully submerging yourself in this reality as if it is happening now. So you're seeing it, you're feeling it, you're hearing it, you're smelling it, really waking up all five of your senses as you move through this manifestation exercise. And now I want you to see it play out like a movie in your mind, but it's the magic wand scenario. So what actions do you engage in? What healthy behaviors do you choose for yourself? And how does that feel? When you walk right up to an old fear, an old habit, and you choose something else, what does that feel like in your body? Do you feel empowered? Do you feel brave? Do you feel kind and compassionate to yourself? And really let this movie play out in your mind like the victory that it is. Seeing it all as if it's happening now and noticing what that feels like in your body, in your heart, in your gut. And I want you to imagine who's the first person you would call to share this news with. Would it be your best friend, an accountability buddy, your coach, your partner? I want you to imagine calling them 
and I want you to share this news with them, what would you say? Oh, you'd be so proud of me, I did it. I looked in front of the mirror and I actually complimented myself. I felt proud of the progress that I've made instead of judging how far I have to go. I felt empowered to take care of myself at this party where I used to spin out. Just share this news with them. Are you laughing? Are you crying? What does that feel like to celebrate this success? And now imagining their response. Are they laughing? Are they crying? Are they telling you how proud they are of you? And just receive that, receive that love from them and let that charge you up, let that strengthen your mission. And noticing how that feels in your body and taking a big delicious inhale, breathing in that sense of accomplishment, that sense of joy into every single cell in your body and knowing that this or something better is already on the way to you. That's why these seeds of desire have even been planted inside of you. And again, taking a big delicious inhale, breathing this feeling of accomplishment into every single cell in your body. And as you exhale, letting go and surrendering anything that isn't serving you or your dream. Really good. And in your own time, Starting to move your hands, moving your feet, bringing your awareness into the body, into the room, into the right now. We can start to slowly, gently open the eyes. <laughs> so I know you said five minutes, but I got a little. <laughs> Oh, that's so all right because <laughs> the last thing I wanted to do was open my eyes. So <laughs> I know I sort of I opened my eyes and I was like, "Ooh!" And John said five minutes. I went for twelve. <laughs> awesome. So I hope everyone was able to stay with us. But it seemed like we uh, yeah. had a nice flow going. Well, I you know uh, I I remember when you were at Omega the first time, and I don't know how you, the meditation was like forty five minutes or an hour, and. Uh, you had mentioned that that much time had gone by and uh, I thought 10 minutes went by and everybody in the room just was like, there was this wave of shock that that, that much time had gone in the room because you just kind of like held this in this timeless place where you just can't help, you know, you just can't keep going and you lose track of time. Yeah, you see, you were so funny. You said, Emily, did you move the hands on the <laughs> you remember you that, didn't huh? believe that that much time had passed. Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> it was absolutely amazing. And this one was too really, really powerful. Uh, I'm glad we recorded it, so uh, we'll yeah, play it again too. and again on our on our page. But uh, so you you've got a uh, a master class mm -hmm. that we've been enjoying for free that is going to help us learn how to do this type of meditation on our own and uh, and continue our meditation journey. Is that right? Can you tell us a little bit about yeah, it? Yeah. So basically, it's called the Stress Solution, and and you learn all about mindfulness, meditation, and manifesting, and and it's more of the science behind, like because a lot of people are using mindfulness and meditation as synonyms, but they're not the same thing. Yeah. And so I sort of describe the differences, what's happening differently in your body. So and and I walk you through some of the exercises that we just did. I mean, your audience is so advanced, and you've done such an amazing job, like giving people these powerful tools. So we kind of went for it here. So some of the things we'll do on the mass class but it's gonna be more of the intellectual understanding behind it and then if people want to dive deeper and really become self-sufficient in these tools we have an amazing new course happening called Ziva Online cool. and that's 15 days of training and once you graduate you don't need me anymore wow. like you'll be able to do this thing on a plane on a bus with your kids screaming in the next door and it's really quite a portable and powerful tool to take with you for life so we can learn more about the Ziva online course from the masterclass? Is that yeah, right? exactly. It's sort of like the prequel. It's like the foundational training in that masterclass stress solution. And that's totally free of charge. And at the end of it, you'll be like, oh, yes, I'm in. Or like, you know what? That was great, but that's yeah. all I need. Awesome. So uh, so we have a link here on the page. Yep. Uh, if we click that link. That'll take us to the masterclass. And uh, we, can, we can get started. We can learn how to create this meditation for us. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Nothing more powerful. The meditating and the, and the way that you teach it, I love it. You're just very grounded, uh, and uh, you, you speak English <laughs> really well, and you and you de you demystify it. And I think I just think that's what this generation is about. It's demystifying it. You know, uh, 50 years ago or uh, 75 years ago, when meditation was first uh, launched, 
there, or explain, came to the West, uh, there was a lot of religion behind it. There was a lot of belief systems that went with it, but it was all very necessary because that's where it was. It came from the East and they had all those things. And so meditation had all this kind of um, mysticism around it and confusion, but you demystify it. You, you teach us a very practical way. There's no belief system we have to adopt. There's no religion that we have to adopt. Our religion is our religion. Our beliefs are our beliefs. This is how you deepen your meditation. And I love that. So uh, excellent. Emily, thank you very, very much for your time. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it, and I know my audience will appreciate it too. Uh, so keep up the great work. You're just a tremendous inspiration and uh, just awesome what you're doing. Thank you so much, and the feeling is so mutual. I'm very inspired by you, and it's an honor to get to share. So thank you. Awesome. And thanks, everyone, for listening. Click on the link below. Join Emily's Masterclass. Learn meditation in the most simple and demystified way. Uh, it will be the greatest thing you've ever done in your life. I can say that because that's what I feel in my life. I feel that to be true. When you develop a daily meditation practice, when you learn how to do it, it, it takes on a life of its own and you feel more connected, more centered, more calm, more creative. Your relationships flow, your abundance flows, your health gets better and better. So it is, it's an amazing tool. So thanks, everyone, and uh, we'll speak to you soon. Take care.